For the first time since 2016, when Nebraska went 9-4, and four, was ranked in the top 25 for much of the season, and they made a bowl appearance, Nebraska is undefeated in non-conference play. And as of right now, the odds say they are favored to get to a bowl game. And this coming week, they will be playing in a top 25 matchup on Friday night against the Illinois Fighting Illini, who after today's AP poll release are ranked 24th, the Nebraska Cornhuskers are ranked 22nd. It is a game that I am very excited for and that I will be doing many videos on. But before I get into previewing that game, I want to break down Nebraska controlling Northern Iowa in a 34-3 win, where there was good, bad, and ugly. I'm not going to do a full deep dive on those specific things like I did with Michigan, because I think Nebraska's weaknesses are a lot murkier than Michigan's, which are much clearer. Nebraska has some things to work through, but right now I think they have a lot more going for them than against them. They are definitely a team that is gaining momentum, not a team that's trying to light the fire. But before we dive in, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, share the video around, and comment your thoughts down below. Yes, you. I want you to like, share, subscribe, click the bell, and comment your reaction to this game. What did you like? What didn't you like? Engagement makes College Football with Sam the best Big Ten and best college football channel on YouTube. Your fan engagement and my response, our interaction, does so much, and it's what makes us different. Along with the fact that I do my best to dive in deep for every video, and supporting the channel, you can do that through, again, liking the video and subscribing, which helps us get into the algorithm, and at 20,000 subscribers, we'll be doing a giveaway, and... If you want to support monetarily, there's my merchandise store and Patreon page for which you can find those in the description or through the pinned comment via links. But Nebraska was far more dominant on the scoreboard than the yardage would indicate. And that is credit to Tony White's defense bending a little bit, getting challenged up front, but never breaking, coming up with an interception in their own territory preventing Northern Iowa from scoring. It also is a testament to the fact that Nebraska was super efficient on the majority of their drives in scoring. Riola averaged over 10 yards per pass attempt. The rushing offense averaged more than five yards per carry. And Nebraska in total had less than 50 plays. They only had 48 plays, scored 34 points. So they were, they were pretty efficient honestly. And that's encouraging given that in previous years under Scott Frost or Mike Riley or last year under Matt Rule in his first season in Lincoln, the Cornhuskers weren't efficient, really. Like, not one bit. Quarterback play was horrific last year. Under Scott Frost, you saw the offensive firepower, but it could never come together. And against Northern Iowa, which could have easily been a letdown spot, and Northern Iowa is one of the more physical FCS teams. They've challenged Iowa in the past and other FBS schools. For Nebraska to come out and be this efficient and win by 31 points, covering the 30.5 point spread, despite only having 21 minutes and 53 seconds of possession, yes, Northern Iowa milked the clock and really controlled the clock for the entire game. But Nebraska controlled the game, and there are instances where an opponent, this rarely happens, typically you want to control the clock, control the lines of scrimmage, the lines of scrimmage were a battle, and Northern Iowa controlled the clock, but if you can consistently gain more yards per play, and you can score more than the other opponent, just roll with it. It's how Iowa State beat Kansas State last year. They had a bunch of explosive plays, averaged way more yards per play, and Kansas State had 45 minutes of possession and lost. So sometimes you have to go with what works, and I think the fact that Nebraska passed for more than they ran in this game and had success through the air, also had success on the ground, Heinrich Harburg got some playing time, 
Nebraska only had a sack and three TFLs, but it's good that the defense did get challenged here against Northern Iowa instead of being challenged against Illinois, probably not Purdue, but conference foe who theoretically should be more talented and better than Northern Iowa, though in practice I doubt it. And teams like, you know, Rutgers, Indiana, um, especially Ohio State, for example. Some mentioned how Georgia versus Kentucky could be a wake-up call for the Bulldogs, and it very well could be. But given that they have Alabama in two weeks, and Alabama looks awesome, and Georgia against not just Kentucky but Clemson for a half looked pretty anemic on offense, like they missed Brock Bowers a lot and there was something off with Carson Beck, I would say they have some pretty legitimate concerns on offense, like relative to their expectations. Georgia's way better than Nebraska, but their expectations are to win the national championship or at least make a playoff run and compete and play for the SEC championship. Nebraska's just trying to get above 500, like 8-4, and 9-3. and three. Depending on how 7-5 and five looks, that could still be a decent to good season, but really shooting for 8-4, and 9-3, and three, factoring in the schedule. The only thing I can potentially criticize about this team, and I think this may be a little bit of nitpicking, but can they be explosive? And by that, I mean opponents that actually matter. I'm not talking about UTEP. I'm not talking about Colorado. I'm not talking about Northern Iowa. Those are outside of maybe Purdue, and I think Purdue has better defensive personnel than anyone who Nebraska's played so far. Those are going to be the worst defenses by a mile, and certainly the least talented defenses that Nebraska has played all season long. Can Nebraska be explosive? We've seen Dante Dowdle and Emmett Johnson get big runs. We've seen Dylan Riola and his huge arm. But I do have some, and again, this might be a little bit nitpicking. I do wonder if, I think clearly Nebraska's good at getting what they need to get. They're a very efficient offense. I'm just wondering, against a big-time defense, against a defense like Iowa's, Wisconsin against, I'm not going to go to Ohio State because Ohio State now per S&P Plus has the nation's best defense and Iowa's defense has holes in it. I have not seen outside of fourth and short any issues with Ohio State's defense. Rutgers defense. Most of the defenses that Nebraska will play, despite being among some of the nation's best, do have areas you can exploit, but it will be challenging. You saw last night how I believe it was a pass to Jalen Lloyd deep, and he didn't handle it properly, and it turned into a pick. And Dylan Riola is also a freshman, so you have those up-and-down moments. He looks and is one of the Big Ten's better quarterbacks, could be one of the nation's better quarterbacks. I mean, right now, he is a QBR that's inside the top 25, 79.2. It's 24th nationally. And being a freshman... In a system like Nebraska's where he has a great defense to lean on that allows him to you know, make a mistake here or there and learn from it, and an offense with players, in the system, he'll operate very well. He played a very good game. Very good game. I'm just reflecting on the Colorado game, parts of the UTEP game, the fact that Nebraska had a fourth down where they once again just couldn't complete it. Maybe explosiveness on offense is the wrong term to use, but can, you know, can they be as efficient and explosive as they were in this game moving forward? Because that will be a big part of their success if they can. The offensive line is better than last year. It's one of the best in recent memory for Nebraska because the Scott Frost offensive lines were so bad, but they're going to be facing bigger and better both in terms of size and athleticism for players and also for depth and coaching, Nebraska's going to be playing better defenses, like Illinois, for example. Can Nebraska be explosive against Illinois offensively, which Kansas was not able to execute with what I would argue are about the same level or even higher level players from a preseason standpoint? And can that be the case for the rest of the Big Ten defenses? 
I also, in this instance, want to talk about Nebraska's defense. Can Nebraska have an explosive defense? Can they make balanced teams off schedule? That was kind of my idea, mostly for the defense, but but also the offense too, because they have not played a balanced team that can go pound for pound against them all season long. They've had some inconsistencies on offense. And on defense, they let Northern Iowa honestly keep them keep them on the field forever. Northern Iowa had um, 37 carries, 145 rushing yards. They averaged 3.9 yards per carry. And their long rush by Aiden Dunn was 11. So they were consistently getting 2, 3, 4, occasionally 5, maybe 6 yards per pop. And really keeping Nebraska honest. And Aiden Dunn is Northern Iowa's quarterback. He went 13 of 25 for 117 yards, 4.7 yards per attempt, and a pick. So how how does Nebraska do against mobile QBs? Shadur Sanders has some mobility, but he ultimately wants to, you know, be in the pocket. He only makes plays with his legs really to extend his his potential to throw and, and get a play. And he didn't have the O-line or the matchup in the trenches to really run all that much against Nebraska. Northern Iowa is one of the FCS's better offensive lines, I do believe. Just from watching this game and how they played and how they went pound for pound against Nebraska. And the fact that they they traditionally have done well on offensive line in the FCS. And that's concerning because Nebraska is a team that last year was really good at stopping the run. They were good at stopping the pass, but not to the same degree. And they play, you know, Rutgers, they play Ohio State, they play Wisconsin, and Iowa, Iowa has a rushing offense. They may not have much of a passing offense. Yes, it's better than last year's, but that doesn't matter. Caleb Johnson and that offensive line are legit. I mean, he is consistently finding ways to get explosive play after explosive play. Unless he gets hurt, and I hope he doesn't, no one should wish for any player to get hurt, and unless he faces a defense that is elite elite, like perhaps generational at stopping the run, he probably will not be held to Zippo explosive plays in any given game. I mean, that's just how consistent their ground game has been. And for Ohio State, it's even more so because they have, you know, two running backs who are better than Caleb Johnson. And I don't know if their O-line is better, but it has the talent to be. And for Rutgers, Rutgers is Kyle Manungai in an experienced offensive line that helped him to have 1,000 rushing yards and nearly 10 rushing touchdowns last season. Nebraska's rushing defense currently in the 2024 season has allowed 70.3 yards per game, 2.5 yards per carry through three games. And that's a good number, but I wonder if I wonder if teams will be able to do what Nebraska, what teams were able to do to Ohio State last year, where if you can just where you're able to get three, four, five yards per pop on Nebraska. And if you're just patient, you'll be able to move that defense. It's something to think about. The defense really, out of the critique of can Nebraska be explosive, that's really where this focus is on. Can they get more pressure? Can they get in the backfield more? Because against Colorado, that's a given if you have a decent defense. UTEP is UTEP, and Northern Iowa is Northern Iowa, and they struggled to get in the backfield and really shut down that rushing attack. So that's something to look at in the future, and that's also just something to look at against Northern Illinois, who, not Northern Illinois, sorry, against Illinois. I don't know how I got Northern Illinois mixed up in here with Northern Iowa and Illinois, but Northern Illinois beat Notre Dame, so... And they're also ranked in the top 25. So my mind's on everything college football. But it's also something to pay attention to when you look at Illinois and how they have a good run game, an offensive line that is not good but improved and more experienced than last year. And their defense seems to have caught up to their expectations where it was horrible and also riddled with injuries last year. You also got to consider that, well, 
Luke Altmaier has legs, and he's playing much better than he was compared to last season. What I want to really end this video off on, though, is the fact that Nebraska, I think, is a physical beast. You look at how they're able to run the ball and how they're able to just dominate opponents. And again, 3-0 and against a pretty weak strength of schedule, but I think it, it stands the fact that their defense held Colorado to no points in the second half. And by the time Colorado scored their first touchdown, the game was already over. The dogs were already called off. They held UTEP to seven. They held Northern Iowa to three. And they beat Northern Iowa in a way that is unorthodox to what Matt Rule wants to do. Rule wants to control the clock. He wants to shut down opposing run games, quickly get three and outs. The way Nebraska held Northern Iowa to three points and also the way they won is very unconventional. That's typically not how you win a football game. If I were to tell you before this game kicked off that Northern Iowa had nearly 40 minutes of possession, you'd probably feel a little bit nervous if you're a Nebraska fan. Just Not just because the fact that Nebraska's identity and Rule's identity is controlling the clock, but when your defense is on the field for 20 more minutes than the opposing defense, that is typically not a good sign. And even with Northern Iowa's defense rested, Nebraska was able to cut them up, put up over 400 yards. The turnover battle was even. They outgained Northern Iowa by four first downs. Nebraska's offense had some explosive plays, and if they just get more disciplined and the offense improves and gains experience, they'll be better with explosive plays. They'll get better on fourth down, and the defense held their own, played a bend-but-don't-break style, which I don't think that's how they wanted to play. But they worked with what they had, and they dominated. And that's what the good staffs, the great staffs, the elite staffs do. And Nebraska, they won the penalty battle, too. Four penalties, 44 yards. Northern Iowa had nine penalties for 95. This team is disciplined. The way that they're recruiting, the way that I'm seeing their players be developed is a work of art. Their players and their roster is put in a better position to win and is better developed just only looking at 2024 and three games, it is a small sample size, but there is something to potentially take away from it. They're better at developing their players, coaching them, and scheming for them than Wisconsin, than Michigan, than Iowa, than Minnesota, than Illinois, than Purdue. Northwestern, you don't have a lot to, to work with, so... You could maybe hold off on them, but I'm still going to put them up here. Um, through three games, I think they've done a better job than USC at putting their players in a position to win. USC has played a tougher strength of schedule, beat LSU. But I, I don't think that USC, for example, beating LSU is anything special after that South Carolina game. I think that if Lincoln Riley was a good coach, they were going to win that LSU game, whether he is great or whether he has things heading in a national title contender direction. That has yet to be seen, though I think with the hiring of Lynn that was already put into motion. Nebraska, speaking of putting things into motion, they're going to be a Big Ten championship contender next year. And I want to be careful, but I think that depending on how things shape up in the next month, month and a half, they they could be. They it, It's a long stretch, but it's possible because Wisconsin looks much worse than I expected. Rutgers is about the same. Iowa looks worse than I expected, particularly on defense. And while Illinois is better than I expected, Purdue is about the, the, the the same, I'd say probably worse. And Indiana, well, I think Indiana's faced an easy strength of schedule, much like Nebraska. Uh, the difference is UCLA is, I mean, they faced, in fact, probably perhaps a slightly weaker strength of schedule. I mean, Colorado would probably beat UCLA based off of what I saw from that Indiana-UCLA game and from UCLA for three quarters being shut out by Hawaii despite the talent that they brought back. This team's a physical beast, and while I don't think they'll win the Big Ten this year, and it'll take like it'll take me seeing Nebraska succeeding and playing at a top 15 level 
before I predict them the following year to win the Big Ten, and that could be the case this year. But they they're they're on the rise. That's really what I'm trying to say. And their staff has done a better job of coaching their players and scheming them and helping them to punch above their weight class. They haven't faced anyone above their weight class, but I'm telling you, based off of what I see, the dominance, the way they're able to control games, the fact they don't shoot themselves in the foot, they are on the rise. They're doing a better job than half of Big Ten staffs are at putting their players in a position to win, and better than any staff in the former Big Ten West. So high praise to Matt Rule and Marcus Satterfield and Tony White and all the staffers there for the Cornhuskers. My MVP for this game is Dylan Riola. The pick was not on him. He had a 91.9 quarterback efficiency rating, 247 passing yards, 17 of 23 through the air. He is quickly, quickly rising in the Big Ten quarterback power ratings. I don't have specific power ratings in mind, but he's he's rising through them, and he's doing a pretty good job. 162.2 passer rating on the season, only was sacked once, and that was against UTEP. So he's done a good job evading pressure. His line has done a fair job protecting him, and he's a great field general, and he's more than a field general. He's an awesome athlete, and he has a lot of upside to him. He also has a long scramble of 15, and he's been able at times to pick up yardage when it's advantageous. So Nebraska is a smart quarterback, a strong quarterback, an efficient quarterback. And when you have one of the nation's better QBs, one of the big tens for sure, like when you are at the top of the quarterback food chain in your conference, you will have success. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks to Crash2488 and Brasco Rasco for sponsoring this video and channel as Heisman Patreon members. Thanks to Chris Lane, kind of little OH, Ismar, Tyler Nye, and Chilton Kush for being all American members. And thanks to John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janisha Cockrell for being all conference members. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my merchandise store and Patreon page via the link in the description or down below in the pinned comment. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all soon. Go Big Red, and what's Northern Iowa's logo again? <sighs> go Panthers and go Cornhuskers. Have a great day.